characterizing the sequence of occupation of the Roman villa of Lamina. Combined interpretation of intensive surface sampling and geophysical data. Part 1. Objectives. The Roman Villa of Lamina is located in the province of Salamanca in Spain. The area of interest was determined using aerial photographs and surface sampling surveys. The main objectives of the project were defining the extension of the site, describing the geometry and use of the villa, describing the sequence of occupation. The methods used were a magnetic survey, ground penetrating radar, a surface sampling survey. The main limitations of the project were that the area of interest was interrupted by a secondary road, the ground surface was plowed and covered with stones. The acquisition had to be done in two days. Part 2. Individual surveys. The magnetometer survey covered an area of around one hectare. The results show in black negative contrast and in white positive contrast. The small dipoles with random orientation indicated metals in blue. The dipoles oriented in the north direction indicated possible kilns in red. Or combustions in orange. The negative linear anomalies were associated to constructive structures but these were not well described. L3 is an elliptic positive area associated to a possible accumulation of material. L4 is composed of aligned positive anomalies. Its function was undetermined. The location of the GPR survey was decided based on the result of the magnetometer survey. The GPR survey covered an area of around 5,000 square meter. The results are shown with low reflectivity data in white and high reflectivity data in black. The structure of interest starts at a depth of 30 cm. The main level of constructive structures was identified at depths included between 50 and 70 cm. The following levels showed the evolution of the structure with depths and possible pilae. No structure could be identified below 95 cm. The GPR survey was divided in nine areas for the interpretation of the data. Area 1 shows several small rooms of around 5 by 5 meter parallel to a central pool. In area 2, the anomalies were more subtle, which could indicate a worse state of preservation. Area 3 and 4 show constructive features that seem to continue beyond the survey limits. Area 6 showed several rooms and internal divisions. In Area 7, the main feature was associated to a possible canalization. Area 9 shows a large reflective area possibly related to the canalization in Area 7. All the constructive structures have the same orientation. The surface sampling survey covered an area of around 7,000 square meters. It was covered using label squares of 10 by 10 meter. The total number of shirts in each square was collected and represented specially from white, low density to dark blue, high density. Four areas were identified based on the survey. Areas A and B could be explained by the local slope. Shirts accumulate in area A. Areas C and D show high density values possibly related to the occupation of the site. The main, two main categories of shirts showed larger populations. The abundance of the late Hispanic Terra Sigileta placed the main occupation of the site during the late Roman Empire. The abundance of common cooking ware may indicate the continuation of the occupation of the site until the 8th century. Part 3. Combined Results and Conclusions The, combined, the main constructive structure were detected with the GPR survey. Kilns were identified in the magnetometer survey. They were associated to possible furnaces. They could be related 
to an underfloor heating system or epocaust. L3 was identified in the magnetometer survey. It corresponds to area A of the surface sampling survey with a high density of shirts due to topography. It was then associated to a possible shirt accumulation. Other remarkable structures were identified. Paved floor, a possible canalization, a pathway, and an undetermined large structure. The main conclusion of the survey were that the areas with the largest population of shirts corresponded to the area with the larger density of constructive features, that the combination of the magnetometer and the GPR survey enabled the identification of a heating system, and that the extension of the site could not be determined as it is larger than the explored area.